My coverage of CES 2020 is brought to you by MSI, Thermaltake, Lian Lee, and Cooler Master. Welcome back guys, AMD just finished their press conference, and in case you guys didn't have a chance to sit through the entire hour or so presentation, I'm gonna do a recap for you right now. Now, first off, I gotta mention, this is AMD's presentation. They're gonna show their products in the best light possible. So when it comes to some of the charts they're showing and everything, they should be taken with a grain of salt. That said, AMD has generally not been too sneaky with this type of marketing material in the past, so let's proceed. As usual, they saved the best and most exciting thing, at least in my opinion, for last. So that's where we're gonna start. We now have the announcement, confirmation, pricing, and release date of the 64 core, 128 thread, Threadripper 3 3990X. It is going to be $3,990, which it, I guess kind of makes sense. It is a $4,000 processor, but it will be available February 7th. It will slot into existing TRX40 motherboards. Obviously with a price tag of $4,000, this is gonna be for people with deep pockets and it, it blurs the line between your enterprise grade product and your home product that you'd use on a desktop. But I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of people interested in it nonetheless. It has a 2.9 gigahertz base clock up to 4.3 gigahertz boost clock, 288 megabytes of cache. And they showed what I think is a fairly humorous chart showing Cinebench R20 scores where it scored 25,399, far outpacing any of the other CPUs that were on the chart. They also did a little side-by-side -side V-Ray render where it was 30% faster than two Xeon Platinum 8280 CPUs. Those cost $10,000 each and they're 28 core processors. So this was a 56 core 112 thread comparison to the 64 core 128 thread single CPU that AMD is launching with the 3990X. AMD, if you're watching, I'd be happy to check one of these out and please don't make me share with Kyle this time. Next, let's talk about Ryzen 4000 series mobile APUs. And yes, AMD still does use the term APU or accelerated processing unit. It just means it's a CPU with graphics integrated. And I was happy to hear this information, but they only talked about the mobile variants. To be clear here, these 4000 series APUs are equivalents, at least on the chiplet side, with the 3000 series Ryzen processors on the desktop. So they're based on seven nanometer chiplets, and I am not happy that AMD decided to go 4000 instead of 3000. It makes it a little bit more confusing, but what can you do? What I was hoping for was an announcement, not just of the mobile variants of these, but also of socketed uh, APUs that we could slot into AM4 motherboards, because right now we've got the 3200G and 3400G, which are nice, but they're still based on the last generation 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture. But there were two specific SKUs that AMD talked about. First was the flagship Ryzen 7 4800U, which is an eight core 16 thread chip with a 15 watt TDP. So it's gonna be able to go into very thin, very light, very low power laptops. It has a 1.8 gigahertz base clock, 4.2 gigahertz boost clock, and eight Radeon GPU cores. AMD had some charts with comparison versus Intel's mobile Ice Lake processors, which uh, we'll show here briefly for your perusal. And I think the stat they showed that resonated most with me was comparing it to their 12 nanometer Ryzen mobile processors where it has about two times the performance per watt. The specific laptop that they brought out to show off was a Lenovo Yoga 7, uh, which they said was the thinnest and lightest laptop ever within a few parameters. But in the next few months, or at least in Q1 2020, they're expecting over a dozen laptops launching with Ryzen 4000 processors. They expect to have 100 plus available by the end of 2020. And then a little bit later in the show, they slotted in another Ryzen 4000 mobile processor, which was the Ryzen 7 4800H, which has a higher TDP at 45 watts, but they say has desktop performance in a mobile processor. And indeed they showed a comparison versus a Intel 9700K uh, and I beat it at, at 45 watts. Again, AMD's benchmarks, grain of salt, but if that holds up, that is quite impressive. Stats for the 4800H are pretty similar to the 4800U. It still has eight cores and 16 threads, just that higher 45 watt TDP and a higher base clock at 2.9 gigahertz versus the 1.8 gigahertz on the 4800U. Now let's talk about the graphics side of things with AMD's Radeon Group. Uh, they're introducing some new FreeSync standards, which I thought was kind of interesting. They're gonna have FreeSync, which is your basic variable refresh rate that it already is. FreeSync 
Sync Premium will indicate a 120 hertz or better monitor with LFC or low frame rate compensation. And then you have FreeSync Premium Pro, which is 120 hertz plus LFC as well as HDR support. Probably more interesting for you guys though is the introduction of the new Radeon RX 5600 XT, which is gonna directly compete with Nvidia's 1660 Ti, which is one of the go-to products if you're searching for a graphics card in the 250 to $300 range. The 5600 XT has an MSRP of $279, and it features 36 compute units, six gigs of GDDR6 memory, a 1375 megahertz game clock, that's uh, one of the new stats that AMD kind of made up, uh, but up to 1560 megahertz boost. Again, some stats provided by AMD showed it being about 10 to 15 percent faster versus a 1660 Ti in games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, The Division 2, and Gears of War 5. It will be available soon, January 21st, and again the MSRP is $279. Finally, they also briefly mentioned Radeon 5600M and 5700M, which will be mobile GPU variants. Not too many details on that, except that they'll be launching in Q2 of 2020, and they did show off a special edition Dell G5 laptop, which is only gonna cost $800, uh, which I assume will be available in Q2 2020. The last thing directly from the press conference I wanted to bring up was something called Smart Shift, and this is just something that kind of makes sense if you look at the products that AMD makes, which is discrete GPUs, as well as CPUs, with integrated graphics, combine those in a laptop and you have a, an ecosystem that allows you to do some fancy things on the software side. Specifically here, they're talking about load balancing and basically overclocking either the CPU or the GPU, depending on what you're doing. If you're gaming, it might give the GPU a little bit extra power, a little bit of extra frequency headroom while downclocking the CPU. If you're doing some video rendering or another CPU intensive task, it will then downclock the discrete GPU and give you a little bit more CPU horsepower. Makes sense. Uh, they're showing maybe a 10% performance benefit depending on what you're doing. They said it's still in the early development phases, but something to keep an eye out on because if you have a laptop that has an AMD APU as well as uh, discrete graphics, uh, you probably will just be able to enable this via a software update. Speaking of new laptops based on these new AMD 4000 series mobile processors though, I have had a chance to check out a few of them, starting with MSI. They have the Alpha 15, which is their existing chassis. They've already been using it for Ryzen 3000 series mobile processor based laptops, but they're basically going to be dropping the Ryzen 4000 series mobile processors into those. They feature FreeSync support up to a Radeon RX 5500M mobile GPU, uh, dual fan cooling with seven copper heat pipes, and you can get up to a 15.6 inch 1080p 144 hertz display along with those laptops. It should be noted with laptops that you often have a single chassis design with a wide variety of hardware that can be wedged in, which is why you'll often hear up to this display space spec or up to this graphics card integrated. That just means if you want the stuff that they're talking about, you're probably gonna need to pay for the more premium variant of that laptop. They also have the new Bravo 15, and this is their newly redesigned chassis. We're expecting it to be available in March. Uh, display stats are pretty much the same, up to 15.6 inch, 1080p, 144 hertz displays, Radeon RX 5500 mobile GPUs. Aesthetically though, I would say it's a nice clean looking laptop. It's got some brush metal. And uh, I, I also noted that if you look at the lid, there's a redesigned MSI Dragon logo, which I thought was uh, pretty good looking, classy even. I also stopped by Asus, and they had one of the laptops that they actually also showed at the press conference, which is the Asus ROG Zephyrus. They have two variants of this, the G14 and G15, 14 inch and 15 inch respectively. These are ultra thin laptops. They're gonna feature the new eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7 4800H, uh, which does have that higher TDP. The most eye-catching feature of these laptops, and it is optional, you can get it without this, is the customizable LED display on the back. They call it the Anime Matrix. LED display. It has 1,215 mini LEDs embedded in the lid. Then I've got a little bit of software so you can just type in text to display there or load up an animated GIF or you can even, you know, make your own. Like a Paul's Hardware logo that was sourced from a picture of Joe's business card, which is why it didn't turn out that great, or even a dick butt. Everyone loves a dick butt. I do have some more details on the G14. It is classified as a Max-Q laptop according to NVIDIA standards. Uh, and I actually like the lid design apart from the LEDs on the back. It's got what they call an ergo lift hinge. It kind of wraps around the bottom of the laptop so that when you open the laptop, it kind of wraps around the back of the laptop so that when you open it up, it uh, lifts it up a little bit off of the desk. And I will say, 
from using a laptop like my uh, Razer 2016 edition here, when I'm doing some heavy lifting on this, I often prop it up a little bit just to give a little bit more airflow underneath and a little bit more fresh air for the fan intakes. So nice that it's just kind of built into the hinge that way. It's only 17.9 millimeters thick, weighs only 1.6 kilograms, over 10 hours of battery life. It can be charged with a power adapter that they slimmed down. It's not tiny, but it's a lot slimmer than a lot of power adapter bricks I've seen. That's a 180 watt power brick. That provides 180 watts of juice, but you can also charge via USB. Uh, if you have a USB Type-C power pack, you can just do it that way. It's not gonna charge as quickly, but it does give you a more flexible option for keeping your laptop charged on the go. It is available in Moonlight White or Eclipse Gray, available in February 2020. And I think probably the coolest part is the graphics options that are available. You can get up to a GeForce RTX 2060 uh, discrete GPU in there. Uh, that is the best GPU that will be available in the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14. And that is also the end of this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching my continued coverage of CES 2020, and a huge thank you to my sponsors, MSI, Cooler Master, Lian Lee, and Thermaltake. I'll be back with more content really soon. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.